Hello and welcome to Evolve Pipe Drive Podcast, which are all things pipe drive, sales, apps and pipe drive marketplace. My name is Bruce Bignall, I only run Evolve, a technology consultancy based in the UK, working globally, focused on helping businesses get more out of pipe drive through aftercare, implementation, consultancy and training. We've recently launched our Evolve Sales OS, which is, has a small list of curated apps to help you sell more and has a free masterclass with over four hours of content from experts about pipe drive, Surf, Just School, and Outplay. Today, though, I have the pleasure of being joined by George Fitzko, the Director of Partnerships at Reply.io. Reply.io, or Reply, which I'll say from, from here on in, um, is a sales conversation and AI powered engagement platform. I'm really looking forward to this conversation with George uh, for a couple of reasons today. One, because the team at Reply are building a very cool tool for helping with initial outreach to follow-ups, to mixing and matching different touch points. And I'm keen to uncover some of the insights that they're seeing and predicting for 2024 and beyond because they're building it. Secondly, because George has experience across many disciplines from his background in completing a computer science uh, degree to working in support, teams, working as a product manager, starting a reply as a sales exec, sales manager, and then making the switch in the partnerships in 2021. So, Without further ado, George, please can, can you introduce yourself and reply to our audience by sharing some of the business problems that you guys are solving? Definitely. Hi, Bruce. Uh, first of all, thanks for such a nice introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is George. I am uh, Director of Partnerships here at Reply. As Bruce mentioned, I've been with the company for, I don't know how many years, since 2016. Uh, I joined as uh, employee number 16-ish or something like that in the capacity of a salesperson and uh, have been with the company ever since and it's been a hell of a ride and uh, I'm happy to share uh, what we've uh, learned along the way and, and some of the things that are uh, waiting for us in terms of uh, what the future holds in uh, sales engagement in general. I, I love it. So so in, in terms of um, uh, you were employee number 16, what does what what the business look like now uh, and where, where are you based? What's the kind of reach and things like this? Yeah, so my personal story is I moved uh, from uh, Ukraine to Canada in 2016. And uh, uh, the funny story there is, um, so I came to Canada uh, and started looking for a job in uh, tech sales because I've been in that area for many years uh, before that. And uh, I found this job, I found uh, a reply, and I started going through uh, interviews and, and all of that. And only on interview like two, three or four, I realized that uh, it's also a company that also has roots in Ukraine where I'm from. So I didn't get mm. far away from, uh, from my roots. But uh, over the years, we have been expanding globally, uh, kind of the, the heart of the uh, company is still in Ukraine. Um, obviously, because of the well-known uh, events there, a lot of people have moved out for uh, safety reasons uh, since then. But uh, yeah, our founders from there, a lot of our developers are there, but now we're more global. We have a, more of a customer-facing hub here in Canada where I'm based. Uh, we have uh, a lot of people in Europe, so we cover pretty much... Uh, uh, all of the all of the usual kind of markets, uh, North America, EMEA, and uh, a bit of uh, Asia as well. And is is that um, is that kind of global expansion based on uh, use cases around things like language, right? So uh, being in Canada, are there French speakers, are French users, and uh, in different markets? Is is that something that you guys are leaning into as well, or is it all just English speaking? Uh, if I'm completely honest, uh, we are yet to expand to other languages in terms of like languages of the UI. Uh, obviously, yeah. uh, we are being used, our system is being used by uh, companies uh, all around the globe because the language of communication that they're sending to their customers can be any language. But uh, yeah. in terms of like the UI language, it's English for now, but uh, uh, certain changes are coming in that regard. Uh, I think within the next uh, year or so, we're, we're, it's on, on the roadmap. We heard it here first. <laughs> um, so, so what 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 makes a um, successful reply customer, and, and why why do people choose you guys? So it's such an excellent uh, question. Usually, um, so uh, when it comes to sales engagement systems, um, what 
what companies are going to try to uh, sell you is th this is you know we're going to be we're going to be solving all of your problems and i'm talking about sales engagement industry in general not not all yeah. companies which is understandable because because people need to sell kind of the the bright future but what uh, they admit in that process and try to catch up on throughout the um, the the usage cycle of of the platform is then try to educate them on how to properly use it. So if I'm completely candid with you, um, what makes us a, a successful reply customer is understanding that this is not a uh, mm. you know a, a life hack. This is not a hack at all. This is not something you uh, you know do once and you're golden. Uh, this is a journey. This is a learning. And but you come up much stronger, much better. Well, better versed in all things sales and sales automation because it, it teaches you how to uh, uh, properly speak to a large uh, number numbers of people a large audience but in a very customized and personalized manner yeah. as if each and every message is sent directly to that person uh, how to treat uh, uh, different scenarios how to um, automate different um, if then conditions, there's so much uh, learning that that uh, can be made. Uh, but again, on the surface, it's uh, uh, what we call set it and forget it. You, as long as you understand the basics, you can you can uh, get started very quickly. But uh, the reason we have uh, a whole uh, separate kind of service component of our business is it's it's a learning, it's a journey, and throughout the journey. Um, we uh, stay with our customers and we educate and, and we onboard and we uh, handhold uh, our customers as for them to be able to, to get better and better and better. Even, even though they eventually may decide not to use our platform, they will know how to uh, do this with, with any piece of automation software that they, uh, that they like. Yeah, that, that, that's really cool. And I think there's something you mentioned there, well, actually, when you, you took me through the platform a bit earlier, um, what you just said there relates to some design, some design decisions, right? And one in particular is making me think of uh, the emails out. So you actually connect your email domains and your. So if you're going to be cycling your domains, which we would recommend if you're going to be doing anything really at scale now, um, and we can talk about that if, if you want to, but um, this is coming from the individual rep. This is coming from, it's, it's not just a set it and forget it at scale with kind of blanket numbers of kind of prospects that you, you should know these people or, or, or you're reaching out to them for, for a particular reason, right? And it is coming from you, not a um, uh, like a, 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 a domain that isn't linked to, to the business, right? So I think from a design decision for the business, that then links back to, to what you were saying there. It's, it's, a, it's not a, um, you're not promising, look, you just set this and you don't ever work in it again. You guys, the reps, the sales managers, the CROs should be owning this, should be tweaking this either themselves internally as a project or they or they work with you guys because of obviously you know what's coming down the pipe, what to what to prep for. So um, uh, do, do, you, do you see some more of those, those design decisions across the business in terms of what you're, what you're doing? Yeah, so first of all, uh, very good observation. It is... Uh, it, it's not about uh, just automating as much as possible for, for the sake of automating. Uh, the way we usually describe it is um, we are doing, we at Reply, we're helping you do the same thing you would still otherwise be doing manually. But we allow you to uh, to skip that and not spend the whole day doing that, but maybe set it up once, uh, maybe spend 15, 30 minutes initially, automate uh, the, uh, the whole process, but still make it look and feel, and this is the key here, uh, look and feel as if uh, I, George, really sat down in front of my computer and sent you this message, this LinkedIn and everything else, because uh, uh, at scale, it's still going to look like I reached out to you directly. And that's where the magic happens, where people want the psychological principle of reciprocity. People want to return the favor yeah. because they, they've, uh, they've seen that you've invested some time into uh, learning who they are and they want to be uh, uh, reciprocal in, in that regard. Uh, there, there are many design decisions uh, that uh, support that from, like, like you said, from be, not being a third-party email, mass email provider, which we are not. And frankly, uh, on the surface, uh, a lot of the time we are being compared to like, 
marketing automation systems, which I don't have anything against marketing automation systems, but yeah. they are designed for a slightly different purpose. Yes. Um, yes. Whereas in, in here, we are doing, again, like I said, doing the same thing you would still be doing manually if you want to convert those conversations into uh, uh, into proper, let's say, calls, demos, and then uh, ultimately deals closed. Uh, and uh, other design decisions are, uh, well, we're trying to maintain this uh, balance between uh, user friendliness, simplicity, uh, mm -hmm. clean UI versus feature rich. For yeah. instance, you've noticed and in and, and the, and the quick demo that we did, uh, you want to uh, look at your stats. You open the stats window and you see high level, you see everything you need to see opens, replies, all of those things. But if you uh, dive a little bit deeper, you open additional fil filters and you can um, define, okay, so my open and reply rates are good, but how, what does that mean for this specific cohort of people? Let's say I want to see how well my CEOs are responding versus VPs of sales, which is typically our, uh, our personal kind of, within reply, our target audience that we reach out to. So we can narrow it down. We can filter the, uh, the title CEO and look at their open rates uh, over the same period of time and, and compare it to the, uh, to the overall uh, stats. Many, many uh, things like that. But again, it's always a balance. We're trying to stay Fairly simple to understand. Uh, I used to say in the beginning, you need like 15 minutes to get started. Now you probably need half an hour. Uh, <laughs> but then if uh, the more and more uh, you get into it, uh, uh, the more of a power user you become, there's so much to uncover, including some of the pretty uh, advanced and exciting AI stuff, which uh, again, I'm happy to talk about as well. Yeah, it's um, an analogy came to my mind where you were keeping it traditional but moving it on so there's like a how <laughs> how must a farmer have felt when he used to use a hoe to plow a field how good did he like he, when he got a tractor he didn't say i don't want to use a tractor anymore or i don't want to use a horse he got the tractor and he still did what he needed to do but he felt he had so much more time to do other things right he could then have chickens on his land he could then do other things um very bad analogy and uh <laughs> my my wife and uh, my colleagues might laugh at me for that one, but it just it gets makes you thinking. There are some traditional routes to sales, and I think what got me thinking about it is when you said this isn't a marketing automation platform. This is, this is sales engagement platform, right? And there there is a difference. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are some other points I wanted to bring up with you, right? So, if this is a sales engagement platform, prospecting, right? So, how should an SDR be thinking about prospecting in twenty twenty four? Uh, it's all about uh, the quality versus quantity, uh, to be honest with you, at this point already. E even, even back in 2016, 2017, when we were just starting out, um, it was a game of numbers. The more leads, the more con whatever you call them, contacts you put into your sequences, just statistically, you're going to get better results if you have uh, a lot of contacts. And uh, uh, the, the science in this art and science type of uh, combination was to optimize the open rates and reply rates uh, through better um, copywriting and so on. But now, um, what I would say is, uh, especially with uh, all of the recent changes to Google's emailing policy, um, I would say pay closer attention to um, validating your list. So your list needs to be first valid. First and foremost, you don't want to get too many bounces because if you do get many bounces, you not only compromise the reputation of the email account that you're using, but also the, the whole domain. And if it's a, you know, if it's a primary domain of a business, that's not a good thing. And second of all, it has to be relevant uh, in terms of uh, your research uh, needs to be um, well thought out so that these people that you are uh, reaching out to with your potential offer need to be uh, potentially reasonably interested in this type of offer because the more of uh, non-relevant uh, contacts you're going to have in that list, the more people are going to be clicking report spam. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it, it negatively affects your results. Once those two pieces are taken care of, uh, which we, by the way, we can help with. We have uh, additional supporting features and uh, supporting kind of sub products, if you will, to improve and maintain good deliverability of your email account. The whole concept of email warm up, 
uh, again, if we're talking about email as a channel specifically, you, you want to warm up your email and you want to keep it warmed up on an ongoing basis, which is something we uh, actually do with our um, with our software package as well. Uh, once uh, that in, is taken care of, again, the the, the same uh, basics apply that always apply. The, the, the copywriting, it has to be relevant. It has to be unique. It has to ideally uh, apply to each and every person individual, which, you know, at thousands of people might not be easily achievable, but uh, with the latest developments in, in, in uh, generative AI that can be done, thankfully, and can be done in reply, we have this AI-based personalization of the first email uh, that, first of all, makes the first email fully unique as opposed to templated, uh, mm -hmm. even though templates might be very useful, you can make it fully, completely unique and different from each and every other email in the list. But second of all, it can, if you have uh, certain bits of information for your contacts, like their LinkedIn URL, we can look at their LinkedIn information, look at certain information, job changes, their interests, and, and, and so on. And we can mention that in the first email at scale. Again, typically, and in the past few years, we've we've been doing uh, the following. We said, if you can afford, open up your um, what we call preview in our sequences before launching them. You know, take a bit of information and, and include mm -hmm. it in your email because that's uh, that's what uh, driving the highest uh, conversions into conversations, at least. Now we can do that automatically. We can, again, through uh, ChatGPT, through generative AI, we can pull that information, mention that without you having to lift a finger. And that's kind of the, 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 the exciting AI part that I was talking about. Yeah, and I think it just goes down to the, the key principles again, right? So the exciting AI is one thing, but there are key principles. Good data, you know, validate your lists, you know, get, get that right. I think gone are the days of, so actually, here's a question. So I, I just asked there, um, how should SDRs be thinking about this? But how, as from a sales management level, what KPI should we be um, asking of our SDRs now? Because it used to be, okay, send um, this many emails, send, make this many calls, but you might have a list of 2,000 people. But now we're saying those lists may be 200 people. Um, so, so how, and I haven't thought too much about this, but what's the, what are the type of KPIs that a sales manager should be setting for the team? In, because we, we keep talking about what the SDR, how their lives changing, but what about the, the sales managers and sales directors? Uh, if I'm completely honest, I, would, I, I wouldn't say uh, too much has changed for sales managers. Ultimately, they uh, are responsible for those uh, uh, numbers and those uh, performance metrics. Uh, but that, that might be different for different kinds of companies. Uh, for instance, depending on who they're reaching out to, how much time they can dedicate uh, uh, researching and talking to each customer, whether it's, you know, very, something very uh, uh, boutique and uh, low level, but, but much uh, higher uh, return on investment versus um, like we are quite frankly at reply. Uh, we are a relatively low cost uh, uh, software solution that allows people to quickly get in at a relatively low cost and therefore, um, uh, sometimes we can't afford to jump on a call with somebody, but we can provide all of the information that they need in, in a different format. So what I'm saying is call to action may be different. Yeah. Uh, so depending on what that call to action is, depending on what a, a conversion is, uh, sales managers are still looking at uh, reply rates, the number of meetings booked, the uh, obviously the conversion of uh, meetings and uh, into paid customers, and yeah. that's uh, what they're uh, optimizing. At least that's what we're doing uh, here. At Reply. It's an ongoing journey, f f and still is uh, a process. But uh, yeah, we're 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 getting there, and we're constantly working on how do we make sure that these people are most likely to be interested. And uh, uh, if if they are, then how do we make sure that uh, the conversion happens uh, with the highest level of uh, probability? If it makes sense. Yeah, I, I think it it comes down to you know pipeline health, right? If, it, because we can talk about all this email opens, email clicks. How many meetings have been booked? What's the sentiment of those meetings? And what's the 
velocity that that pipes, you know, the health of that pipeline, basically. Um, it, it, again, the principles don't change. <laughs> um, we, we have different metrics. We have different ways to measure things, which which are cool. Um, but from impacting the business, pipeline health is is you know is always always key. Um, I wanted to ask. I, I mentioned it at the beginning, but you, you were previously, um, you know, SDR sales manager moved into partnerships quite early on. How do you think about the the changing role of kind of sales into partnerships? Certainly, uh, and speak from this from your perspective, from like I guess in the SaaS world, right? So, what 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 is the moving from sales into partnerships? I, I'd like you to answer it in with two hats on. One is for the um, letting people know that are in uh, sales roles that there there are there is more than one journey to like career path because I think opening up a lot of people think that the only career path is into kind of AEs when actually not everyone is a very good AE. Um, I think That's... some people should probably go into marketing. Yeah, so, so open it from that. And then the other side is just um, what it means for SaaS to have partnerships in, in that role as well from, from as, as a partnership role or department. Yeah, so thanks for this question. Um, it, it, it allows me to kind of stop and think about it because... Uh, Back when I was switching to partnerships, I did not uh, know or uh, realize that it would become this whole movement on its own. Uh, and uh, in retrospective, now I see it's it's a big trend in the in the tech industry in general. What I can say, well, uh, two things. On the one hand, it's not that much different. So if you are in sales uh, and you're thinking about partnerships, you are uh, more or less um, thinking about the same thing, but with a slightly different angle. So in partnerships, it's it's all about sales. It's all under the general, uh, uh, at least in my view and, and, and how we structure this here at Reply. This is still sales, but uh, um, uh, not selling Reply in exchange for money. Uh, less of a transactional uh, kind of um, day-to-day transactional uh, uh, work. Uh, versus more of a, a selling uh, your solution to people, selling the idea and the advantages of your solution to get other people excited so they want to sell it to their uh, customer base. Mm. And that's the the exciting part personally for me. It's been extremely interesting and rewarding for me personally. It's been, um, I would say, a little bit more kind of creative in terms of uh, um, the uh, uh, the paths that that are available in achieving that, so for instance, and a quick plug, we have uh, multiple partnership options, partnership models here at Reply. If you're an agency, we have an agency direction. Uh, if if you're doing um, uh, work on behalf of clients, we have an affiliate partnership model. If you want to get uh, some some extra. Um, income from recommending our solution. We have integration partners. We have uh, kind of high level, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, strategic partnerships with uh, other software vendors. So th- there's multiple directions. They're all super interesting. Uh, I wish uh, there was three of four of me uh, to be able to uh, uh, to handle that. So it's, it's always a game of like a, a struggle of uh, resources versus, uh, um, you know, goals and, and prioritizing things. Um, but yeah, on the one hand, it's the same thing, but uh, just selling, uh, selling indirectly through mm. channels. Uh, so channel sales, essentially. Um, uh, but uh, uh, the way it's different is, it allows you to um, kind of step aside from the day-to-day grind of, okay, I have to make this uh, quota to think of how do I make um, other uh, parties, other companies, individuals uh, excited enough to want to sell uh, my solution and uh, therefore be happy making money doing that, but also... Uh, we're unlocking um, these opportunities of other people spending their own resources. So we're scaling in a, on a much, uh, a much higher scale, mm-hmm. uh, uh, scaling our um, uh, business development and sales uh, activity through these uh, effective, efficient partnerships, which is, again, it's, it's a separate uh, 
uh, art and a science on its own, we could probably have a separate uh, uh, podcast yeah. about this. But uh, yeah, it's been extremely interesting and rewarding. And I'm nowhere near kind of, you know, being at the end of the journey. There is no end of the journey. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's extremely re- rewarding. Yeah, no, I, I would um, I would second that. And it's, it's, it, it is a very um, collaborative space, you know, p- people... You know, it is. You know, it's probably, it's, it's probably been around for, for for a long time in different guises. But I would, um, again, the reason I wanted to bring this up is one, obviously, with your background, I know a lot of people that listen to this are either on pipe drive or considering the switch, and most pipe drive users are either either in in the sales team or the business owners looking to get more from the from the system and kind of wider tech stack. So, um, partnerships can be a great way to expand your sales career and or for a business owner to actually how, how can we get more from our, our sales team and in new directions there's like different growth pots for the year so i i, I do find that um that's why i wanted to ask that question so what what's what's the future for reply so what what's on the roadmap for, for this year is it team expansion obviously we, we've got the sneak peek that other languages are coming <laughs> at some stage um but what what's kind of the main focus and priorities at the moment uh, thanks for asking that. Uh, there, there is quite a few very exciting things that uh, I've been personally uh, waiting for and uh, uh, initiating originally at Reply because you you may know in uh, in these uh, in these types of uh, situations it's always a struggle between uh, you know a uh, 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 fight for resources internally like in 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 a good sense uh, you want yeah. to make sure that the company is following their um, their goals and objectives, but also um, if uh, if your ideas get get picked up, it's uh, uh, very exciting. So some of the stuff that uh, you can expect from Reply is we're continuing to double and triple down on AI because uh, this is where the the whole industry is going. And uh, we've already introduced a lot of things that we've already talked about: personalization, uh, creating the whole sequence, automatically respond responding to people automatically through generative AI sentiment analysis. There's already quite a lot, but uh, what we're also doing is we're uh, lowering the the bar even more for, uh, uh, I'm I'm talking about the barrier of entry into sales engagement in general. So um, this, I'm not sure when exactly this is going to be launched, but there's a, a closed internal beta that I've personally seen. So I can talk about this uh, of, uh, creating sales sequences just from from a few prompts. Uh, you can uh, basically through very simply one page UI, you can define who you are, what your uh, value proposition is, who you want to reach out to, and the system does the rest. It finds you those contacts because mm-hmm. we have that as a component. It, it writes your whole sequence for you. Uh, it launches that sequence. You're, you're good to go within literally uh, a few seconds. It's pretty rev- revolutionary, but uh, yeah. yeah, so that's um, one thing that's coming. Uh, another thing is, and also very big, is we're also getting into inbound uh, a little bit more, um, meaning we've always been a good solution for uh, automating your outreach to your inbound leads. So f- for instance, let's say you get your um, contacts from your website that uh, leave their contact information in exchange for something, and you can reach out to them. Very effective, even more effective way than cold uh, uh, outreach because those people are by definition they're more interested because they already know who you are so yeah. we've been doing that for for a while but now we're going into inbound to capture even more of that inbound traffic and converting it into your paying customer because we're introducing um, our own ai powered chatbot uh with uh, uh with a big focus on again uh high uh, highly personalized uh, communication through generative AI but also very uh, tightly integrated with the rest of the platform so mm-hmm. you may and you may have heard and be using some of those uh, chatbots already they're pretty popular but our main advantage is going to be uh, very tight integration with the rest of uh, the automation platform so uh, you get your contacts, but you also want to get in touch with them and, and stay on top of and uh, remind them about yourself in a non-obtrusive way with all of those sequences. And that's what we're going to be doing. And uh, again, uh, that's uh, 
that's going to be available very soon because uh, another internal demo and I think even external, if, if there are people listening to this that would like to test our uh, chatbots, they're, they're already available to early adopters. Nice. Yeah, that um, gets me thinking that that's, that's a very cool use case. Again, it's, it's a how else can we, if someone's engaging with your website, if someone's engaging somewhere else, how can we, um, that there's a term uh, that the head of uh, David over at um, Kix, he told me about two or three years ago, he called it sales synchronicity. And I loved the, I loved how he coined it. And, and the, the example was, if as a sales rep, you're having your power hour and you've got your, you're calling for that power hour in the morning and the afternoon, if you're just blitzing the phone, if someone then replies to one of your messages or phones back, do you pick it up? Do you reply? Or do you keep power dialing out to new people? Of course, you pick up the phone and you answer because that it's when they're ready. That's a synchronicity, yeah. right? So, or if they've opened a link, they've clicked an email, I want to know that so I can call them at that moment. So it's, it's not calling when it's good for us. Yeah in that first hour in the morning, last hour in the afternoon, it's when they're ready and that kind of sales synchronicity. So, um, and obviously lead capture, lead engagement. But yeah, wherever we can do that, that that's awesome. Um, how does this, how does this all work with PipeDrive? Well, we haven't really talked about that yet. So how, how does the reply platform talk to PipeDrive? Is it native? Is it a no code integrations? What, what's the level of integration that we've got there? All of the above is, is the <laughs> short answer. Uh, we do have our own native integration, um, which is, uh, I may have previously mentioned, it's one of our best integrations in terms of uh, um, the amount of features and the amount of capabilities that you can sync back and forth between the two systems. The reason you want to, you want a native integration is uh, um, it doesn't cost you anything. It's included with uh, the subscription costs, so uh, uh, you're you're already saving right there. Although, if you're a user of uh, Zapier, Make.com, Integrately, all those other platforms, we also are supported, and we can connect to your native no-code integration tool as well. But like I said, our existing native integration is. Uh, no code as well. You don't need to code anything. Just plug in your API code, define your integration workflows in both directions. So for instance, you want to uh, pull contacts from PipeDrive based on a certain trigger, based on a certain field or a combination of fields in PipeDrive, bring it into reply. Not only bring to reply, push them into an automation, into a sequence. And then the opposite direction, once things start happening in reply, once we define their uh, statuses like opened, clicked, replied, interested, not interested, booked a meeting, all of those things. Push it as, as a new information, enrich the data of your uh, pipe drive uh, uh, contact with the new information and update the timeline as well. Uh, just make sure that everything is recorded into the uh, pipe drive because if, if you're a user of a pipe drive, you're probably um, living in pipe drive day to day as your main source of truth. Yeah. Uh, so everything is synchronized nice and uh, uh, synchronized b between the two systems without uh, too much effort. Yeah, nice. It just allows you to have a little bit of forethought. Where do you want to master your data? Is it going to pipe drive and then going out? Or are you going to have your prospecting pool, you know, sales engagement platform as your prospecting pool, and then those engaged leads pushing the pipe drive? It's just, it's a decision to make where you want to master your data, right? So um, no, that's very cool. Um, so th thank you for that. that. That's that's really good. We'll have links in below for, for our demo um, and for kind of trial links and things like that in the, the description below, whether you're listening to this or watching our lovely faces or George's lovely face. Um, so George, can you tell me a little bit about that switch, that, that role switch from sales into, into the partnerships team So and how, how it came about? Was it something that it sounded like you, you wasn't I don't it just want to come off as rude. This didn't this didn't come as uh you didn't see the rollout of the partnerships as, as being the next big wave in, in the kind of SaaS space. But who internally was driving that? Um yeah, so, so and how how did that role come about? It's it's a very again, I haven't properly kind of uh, sat down and, and thought about this. Uh so I appreciate you bringing this up because it allows me to <laughs> 
you know, at least spend these 15 minutes to reflect. Uh, what I can say is uh, um, uh, it, it, it came about naturally for me. Uh, and here's why, because I've, I've been doing uh, sales. I've been uh, working with uh, uh, different kinds of customers throughout the years. And the um, natural progression uh, came to me through agencies. So one of mm. the early um, initiatives that I launched here at Reply was uh, to work with um, sales agencies, marketing agencies, whoever uh, 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 has uh, a, a single uh, client or a number of clients that they need to provide uh, this type of service to, which is to to generate uh, uh, leads, to book meetings, and 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 all of that. So we've developed and we've been selling to them as a, a type of a client first, but then we evolved this whole system into uh, what what is now a an agency partnership model. So that translated into uh, creating a, a, a sub version of Reply uh, with uh, its own set of features, uh, its own pricing, uh, its own um, advantages for agencies who want to utilize uh, uh, Reply as their main sales engagement system. And we that were... was something that you, you, you saw that, that you, you kind of um, saw that as an opportunity to sell to agencies. And so you, you did build this out, right? So you, you, you saw it as an opportunity... Quite a lot of people, I have to say, quite a lot of people advised uh, advised against it. Yeah. Um, and and again, who, now who, who who backed you internally? Who said actually do it? I, I think I just give them a bit of a shout out because I, I think it is. It, there was a lot of resistance against kind of partnerships. You know, more traditional um, selling. A lot of people wouldn't think about it or hadn't been thinking about it. Um. I have to give props probably to our founder, Oleg, uh, who basically uh, gave me green light. He's, he, he kind of uh, uh, believed in uh, this initiative. He, he gave me uh, resources and tools to, uh, to basically create that agency package. Um, uh, the people that didn't believe it, uh, uh, <laughs> what they what they uh, said basically was, you know, agencies will come and go. They're like they're very transactional. They they always jump from one to to another, to, which is true to to a certain extent. But if you yeah. make the best tool, we were probably one of the first, if not the first, sales engagement tool solely focused on agencies. There's quite a lot mm-hmm. more now, but we were the first, and. Uh, uh, but then over time, that uh, also led to, okay, so we have agency partners. What other types of partnerships uh, we, we can evolve and develop our affiliate partnership model, which to be uh, fair, we had before, but it was more of a um, like a self-serve uh, partnership model through a, a bit of automation through uh, partnership uh, management systems. Yeah. Shout out to PartnerStack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, so... Uh, I started looking into that, got very interested in in, in growing the, the the channel side of things, uh, looking at who uh, became more interested as a partner, uh, companies that were interested in reselling, recommending, referring customers. So it, it kind of one thing led to another, and that's how I ended up uh, working with partners. Then the department uh, grew from one person to three people and and now we're i would say in a very decent place uh, as as a partnership department love it thank you thank you very much for sharing it's it's, uh, it's always fascinating um so th- as we come to the end i've got some quick fire questions you can take as long as you want to answer them or you can just uh ring them off the top of your head so as someone that's in the tech industry um what is in your sales tech stack and why Okay, uh, good question. I would say um, start with Reply um, because um, with Reply and PyGraph, let's let's uh, let's put it that way. Uh, because you want to have a system that's uh, been reliable and uh, and I'm talking about not only Reply but PyDrive that has been around for a while and and uh, uh, has uh, um, proven to be a reliable and uh, uh, a system that doesn't have any of the struggles of, of an early stage startup. It's it's an extremely important thing because if you're building out a uh, business and relying on third party solutions to 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 as a backbone of that business, you want to go with the best. Um, and then again, that applies to uh, uh, both uh, PipeDrive and Reply. When it comes to Reply, 
I would say if you're in B2B, even though as much as I would love to, 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 to see you guys as customers, if you're in B2C, you probably want to go with other routes. Mm -hmm. But in B2B, uh, you want to look at sales engagement solutions uh, that uh, provide the, the best bang for your buck. And uh, like I said, ideally, they need to exist longer than you know half a year, a year or a couple of years. Because there's there's a lot more under the hood that you will then discover, uh, you know, on the surface, all the promises look good, but then you see emails are not sending, emails ending up in spam, and support is not really helpful or or takes a while to respond and all of that. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the rest of the stack, it really comes down to um, who you're selling to and how you're selling. So if you're an enterprise. Uh, going after big enterprise uh, companies, you probably want to have a good quality database. You want you you want to have uh, a subscription with uh, let's say Zoom Info to acquire data, or or the like. Uh, you want to definitely call people if uh, if if it's lower volume. Uh, you want to be able to uh, to call people. Cold calling as much as uh, people are keep saying that it's dead. It's not. It's just you have to. Um, yeah. Be careful with it, and also be mindful about it. Uh, so, you, but you still want to incorporate uh, phone calling into your system. Again, quick plug in reply: we have a dialer, but if you go without reply, there's there's plenty of solutions that yeah. I'm, I'm happy to recommend. We we are friends and partners with uh, a few of them. Um, and uh, but if if it, it's higher volume, if it's more uh, kind of higher higher uh, volume uh, contact uh, and you can't afford uh, to get on a call with each and every of your call contacts uh, you want to uh, maybe uh, focus on the quality so acquiring a large list of contacts wherever it is whether it's in reply or uh, zoom if or otherwise you want to clean it you want to validate it you want to do uh, your research and you want to uh, input as much uh, personalization as possible. So this is where you would, might want to look at uh, data enrichment, uh, uh, data um, contact, sorry, uh, data uh, analytics, and um, sorry, I'm forgetting the keyword here. Uh, systems that basically enrich the data with more information that you can use, whether it's yeah. what technologies they're using, what uh, uh, any any um, intel sales intelligence is what I was blanking on sales yeah. intelligence solutions uh, to to help you be more laser focused on uh, your targets. Nice. And from uh, reply, what's your favorite use case that you've seen uh, from a case study or, you know, uh, that you've got, you've, you've come across? Um, I would be biased uh, towards my agencies and uh, all my partners, but uh, I love seeing uh, our partners be successful in recruiting their uh, customers. Because that's what I'm uh, preoccupied uh, day to day, uh, and uh, yeah, I would say um, these these uh, partner um, outreach uh, uh, strategies that they develop with with our help in order to either um, sell their services in conjunction with Reply or recommend Reply uh, to uh, their customers. Nice. And top uh, kind of two prong question: top tip for those getting started with Reply, mm -hmm. and for those um, that are more we've touched on it a couple of times. But uh, for uh, power users, any recommendations for power users as well? Uh, for those who start out with Reply, make sure to invest a bit of time. If you're like me, you're probably gonna be thinking, "I'm just gonna click around and just uh, uh, figure out things for uh, uh, for myself." That's, yeah. that's just, just the type of person that I am. But uh, make sure to invest some time to either look at some of the educational materials that we send you right away when when you sign up, or at least uh, uh, open up the live chat and ask your questions right there. So we pride ourselves and 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 being um, we have. We try to maintain this reputation of uh, uh, a sales engagement system that has the best in-class support, and that applies to both technical support and customer success mm -hmm. departments uh, that uh, that do different things, that but serve the, the the same purpose, helping out our customers. So talk to them with with any questions, any anything that's unclear, or here's my goal, here's what I want to achieve. How do I do that? So mm -hmm. that's for beginners. For for power users. I would say 
uh, more advanced uh, if-then logic, these branched campaigns that we briefly touched on, are ext extremely powerful to create workflows that uh, don't require too much of your attention, but are, uh, again, laser focused on who matters the most. Uh, if somebody keeps opening your emails without replying, mm. send them into another campaign. If somebody uh, replies to you, uh, like we said, the synchronicity, you want to get back to them within ideally seconds, uh, because that's when the, 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 the interest is the highest. Uh, so make sure to uh, create these workflows and tasks and, and, and prompts that uh, mm -hmm. uh, allow for that. And obviously, if, if you're a, uh, an early adopter of new technology, definitely take a look at the AI stuff and uh, the upcoming inbound uh, lead uh, uh, conversion tool uh, that AI, we're still finalizing the, the branding, but AI-based um, inbound uh, lead generation tool uh, uh, with the help of chatbots. Cool. Yeah, love it. Uh, any pipe drive feature requests? Specifically to Pipedrive, um, not really. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It it it, it checks all the uh, basics. Obviously, there's there's always uh, a million feature requests that everybody has. I know we definitely have have them. Uh, but uh, we're very happy with our uh, Pipedrive partnership. I actually spoke with them. I think uh, uh, just a few days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just looking at ways to. Uh, collaborate even more because, like I said, we're uh, there's a, such a good um, match between who their audience is and uh, who we work with as as our customers. I, I wouldn't say there's uh, something that's severely lacking. Uh, it's a very well uh, mature uh, system by now. Yeah, I think that it's crazy. I think they're 14 years old now. I, I think it might it might even be. Oh wow! I think it's 14 years old. Um, so yeah, so shout out to the, uh, the product team over at Pipe Drive. Um, so, as a self-confessed cardio junkie, what's your cardio? Uh, what cardio cup do you like to sip out of? And do you have any adventures or events planned this year? Um, here's my uh, cardio trick. I don't know if uh, I'll be able. Probably not. But I wanted to quickly ch change the camera. Uh, <laughs> there's a treadmill over there. Uh, yeah. You know, this is this is all an illusion. It's a very messy <laughs> place right now. Uh, but there's a treadmill, and on top of the treadmill, I uh, created uh, like a, a, a holder, of, uh, like a tray for my um, laptop. Okay. And uh, you don't have to run. You don't have to be out of uh, breath all the time. Just uh, walk through, uh, w walk during uh, meetings, and it's extremely, uh, really? extremely useful. I think better because you know there's blood flowing to my brain and, and stuff like that but also um i don't know it aside from it being uh, super annoying to my colleagues because i usually do it on internal meetings with uh, uh yeah. my colleagues um that's probably kind of the best thing the, the best investment that i could make with this uh, treadmill uh, hopefully it's gonna get a little bit warmer here in uh, canada soon so we can start i can start running outside but uh yeah uh that that would be my advice Love it. Okay. And any reading recommendations or podcast recommendations that you, you would recommend people listening to? Um, I wish I had more time for a specific um, niche uh, type of uh, uh, podcasts, uh, but uh, I'm a big fan of just generally uh, podcasts that, that are pretty popular that talk about business in general, uh, sometimes politics, business, tech uh, 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 scene in general. Things like, I'm not sure if you've heard about the the, the Pivot uh, podcast, yeah. Yeah, my yeah. favorite, Kara Swisher, Swisher and uh, Scott Galloway. Um, what else? There's a few if, uh, if, if there's, uh, I can't think off the top of my head, but uh, I have a few subscriptions that I uh, fairly often listen to. Yeah, and, and a bunch of entertainment stuff, but that's probably not, that's outside of uh, um, this uh, this discussion. Uh, uh, whatever you're comfortable sharing, it, it, it's all good. You know, the again, the, the top ones, I'm not going to be super um, uh, original here. Uh, Smartless podcast, uh, Conan O'Brien is, you know, a very, nice. very, yeah. very funny podcast. So th that's just for me to, to, to relax during my runs. Yeah, I love it. Very cool. 
Um, well, George, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for, for your time today. Um, was there anything else you want to cover before we finish? Um, yeah, if you if you don't mind, another quick plug because that's what I live and breathe uh, yeah, partnership cool. programs. If anyone listening to this would like to uh, take a look at our uh, affiliate uh, partnership program, which is uh, commission based, you can make uh, a bit of money uh, promoting our solution. If you're an agency, um, uh, also take a look at our agency partnership model. Um, if you're a software vendor, if you're if you're a pipe drive, we're already talking to you, but if, if you are uh, making software that needs to include uh, sales engagement as one of its components, we also uh, partner uh, on that front. So anything that has to do with sales engagement and you think there's, there's a way to collaborate in any way possible, then uh, you want to talk to me. So reach out, george at reply.io. Awesome. Love it. Um, and we'll, if you if you have got the time, we'll put the links in the description below for you to click on that as well. So, George, thank you. Um, you've been listening to the Evolve Pipedrive podcast. We're talking all things Pipedrive, sales, apps, and Pipedrive marketplace um, in order to help you grow your business. Uh, at Evolve, we're a technology consultancy based in the UK, working globally, specialising in helping scaling businesses do more with Pipedrive and the wider tech stack through implementation, consultancy, and training. If you found this insightful, please let us know what you think. In the comments, hit like, subscribe, share it with someone that you think will find it useful. Um, we value all of your feedback. George, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers now.